All right, let's get it. This is Nap Nose Buffalo, and uh, Sunday sucked. Um, it's me, Kyle Knapp, Cash Out BF, Casey Reed. We are here. We will be talking about the Bills game, unfortunately, because that was ugly. Casey, let me let me look. Let, do you want to just start out with your thoughts, or like what, where do you want to go? Because um, that was I'm, I'm just I'm still sad. I. Absolutely. I don't want to talk about bills right now. Um, <laughs> I, I'm over the loss, but I think we have more important things to talk about. Um, I recently got Pokemon Ruby, um, and I'm at the crucial stage in every Pokemon game where I have to pick a starter. I don't know if it should be a fire type, water type, or grass type, and I need your help. What should it be? Just pick one. I think you got to – the coolest one is fire type. By it's far. always fire type, right? It's, it's the cool. That's the coolest type. one. You have to. But this one looks like a chicken. You know. I think you still go fire. Like it's still the coolest. The coolest one is still going to be fire type. Yeah, I think so. Oh well, we'll talk about it. Mm. Well, I mean, okay, so what, like why? The way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. It was, look, that was that was ugly. That was ugly. We yeah. have a couple of things that oh, we're going to go through to talk about the game. Um, we're not going to spend a ton of time on it because you've heard about the game already. You've had time to process it. I hope like it is Friday yeah. already by the time you're hearing this, maybe even Saturday. Um, so we'll, we'll briefly talk about it, but hopefully in a way that is, uh, still interesting, um, because it's going to be a little different than I think what some other people have done, uh, real quick. I want to just run through like my general likes and dislikes, not spend too much time on that, but then. Sure. I want to get into our winners and losers and our favorite overreaction that we saw. Cause I, yes. <laughs> Oh boy, was there a yes. lot. Um, I and it. I don't know if we'll be able to do that exact format every single week, but I think we might be able to. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that goes, but definitely after a loss favorite overreaction, I think that's, there's, it's I don't happen. know about you, but I found, I found a couple of gems. So yeah. we'll, we'll get to that. Um, do you have anything just general that you – actually, here, I'll, I'll just run through my likes and dislikes. You can add on to it after. Things I liked, crowd being back. It was awesome to see fans in the stands. Yes. Obviously, we were not at the game. We are from out of state. It was a little bit more difficult to try and make any of that work, so we didn't go. Um, but seeing fans in the stands on the TV at a Bills game where it's full capacity, that was awesome. Hearing the crowd, it was just super cool. I can only imagine the atmosphere, what it was like at kickoff. I would have loved to be a part of it, um, but it was still very cool to see it on my actual TV. Tyler Bass, loved everything I saw from him. Um, I mean, he is just Mr. Consistency. It, it seems like I, I'm, it's nice to be back at the point where we have a kicker where I'm not nervous. I, that, I yeah, think that's yeah. really all I yeah. need to say. Like, he is Mr. Consistency, and I'm, I, the Bills should be using him. We'll say more. I, there's, I'll get to that in a second. I, um, yeah, I Devin agree. Singletary. Liked what I, I saw like from that. him in general. Yeah. I know some of his yards per carry came uh, later in the game because of just the way the game was going and what the Steelers were giving the Bills. But I thought he looked good all game, even before those big runs at the end. Uh, obviously, not every every run was a big run. But in general, he was good. Like, he not was every good. run has to be a big run, though. Yeah. I and mean, we've talked about that before. So it's okay if he was getting – you know, three, four yards per carry, it's better than the one to negative uh-huh. yards that Najee Harris was getting. So I'm not mad at it, but continue, but continue. Yeah, no, I, I so I tweeted this out and well, this is actually, I mean, this kind of goes into my likes still. Um, Ed Oliver was the next thing that I liked about the game. I thought just overall, Ed Oliver had a really solid game. Yes. Whether it was on a passing down or on a rushing down, he seemed to just always be wreaking havoc in the backfield somewhere. Whether it was him just at getting after the quarterback or if he was pushing the offensive lineman into the running back or into the quarterback, whatever it was, he was around the play. So he just, he made a world of difference for the bills defensive line. He looked a lot more like the guy that we wanted to see. Yeah. And you mentioned Najee Harris. He looked, he didn't look like a first round running back. I like, no. I know that's it's, it's not fair to judge him off of one game. I'm definitely not it's going to take some time for him to learn how to run in the NFL behind a line that is not the Alabama, Alabama offensive line. Like th- when you're running behind the Alabama offensive line, you just have every single hole in the world available to you. 
pause. You have, but you, you have the you have the opportunity to be a first round running back if you're running yeah. behind an Alabama offensive line, and that's yes, facts. and that's how Trent Richardson happens because you have all of the space in the world. You, every single running lane looks like it's open because it is, yep. and then you get to the NFL and people are moving a little faster. The other team is just as big, if not bigger, than you sometimes. Like it's not the same. First round running backs. That's why I wouldn't spend a, a first round pick on a running back, but. That's a we've had that discussion enough, but yes. part of the reason why he didn't look as good as he actually is is because the Bills defensive line actually played a really good game in terms of run defense outside of what the end around. Um, and then the, the last thing, I mean, just defense in general. I know the secondary caught a little bit of heat from some people. Um, I think that's just completely unfair. No, no, for being honest. I'm, there was I'm what three bad it. plays. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not mad at the defense giving up the old Joe Flacco play where you throw it up hoping for a pass interference. Like I'm not mad at that. Like and it's ticky tacky. He didn't get his head around. Blah blah blah. I'm not mad at it. Um, the, the holding, timing is bad. Yeah, the obviously. timing was bad. Yes, but, but it's I'm not, not like it's something there. that happened all game. Yes, and I'm not going to blame the player for ticky tack calls. It could go either way. There were some calls where I was like, oh, we'll leave by that. Yeah, that's pass interference. But then there's others where I'm like, okay, well, I, I wouldn't have called it. They're playing a rough game all day long, but I'm not an NFL um, you know, ref. The, the one call that I did not like was on uh, Trey White. Right when he got the interception, mm -hmm. and I have a friend, and, and your fiance is a Steelers fan, but I, I, I have a friend, a really good friend of mine. He is a Steelers fan, right? And he texted me, and he said, "That's soft. That is so soft. That was nothing." And I was like, "Yep." The only reason why that got called is because you know Big Ben has been in the league for eighteen years, and he pleaded his case to the ref. That's the only reason why I got called. He he said, and I quote, "I don't think Ben knew what was going on. He just I don't think he did up. either." It did. Yeah, no, the announcers gave him the credit for knowing they what did. was going on, and sure, like he might have. I'm not going to say he definitely didn't, but I it will. felt much more <laughs> like that was a scramble. Oh no, let me just get the get rid of the ball so I don't get hit type of thing yeah. instead of a heads up. Oh, he actually like he, he held him there because he's already in his throwing motion when that happens. If yep. if that's actually what's going on, so I, I just don't believe that. But that is a perfect transition between the things I liked and the things that I did not like. Before we do that, I guess, did you have anything else that you wanted to add on to the likes from the game? Uh, I did. I did like uh, Gregory Russo. Um, Good point. No, yep. he did not. He did not get any any sacks or anything like that. Um, I liked his run defense. I think that was the one thing that I was like, hell yeah, dude, let's go. And the reason being is because last year we sucked at containing the run. So to see your first round talent come in there and did he get the flashy plays? No, but he's he's pulling Najee Harris down to the line of scrimmage and that's helping the defense there. So I, I was very okay with him. I thought he had a pretty decent game. I saw I saw some people in the Bills media, not content creators, but Bills media, the media that said yeah. uh yeah, the media that said he was a non factor. And I'm gonna say bullshit. Right. Uh, I'm going to say that he had a couple good plays. Right. So I don't know. But they're media members. Who am I? I'm just a content we could, I mean, Look, we could anything. we could even expand when I said Ed Oliver. I think we could really just legitimately line. expand that to the defensive line. Yes. And then I would even say Matt Milano and Tremaine Edmonds in yes. the running game specifically. Yes. Tremaine Edmonds yes. looked like the player we wanted him to be. Yes. And dare I say it, this this was something that people were really getting on him about. Um did he you notice that Tremaine plays. Edmonds can actually like he'll when he gets a chance like he can actually have a big hit? Did you know that? Yeah, like he'll, he'll what I was out. told all off season was oh, he, he, he can't hit anybody. Nope. No, he, he can. Had, he, <laughs> well, like, he doesn't. He doesn't know how to make flashy plays either. Besides, I don't know um, a pass breakup. You know, right before he sacks Big Ben, I thought that was a pretty flashy play. Um, so I don't know. Whatever. Tremaine, Tremaine Edmonds looked great. I think overall the. Defense looked great, and then the one thing I did like was I liked Isaiah McKenzie returning kicks. I thought I thought he did a very 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 good job, and you know I, I've been preaching um, Marquez Stevenson all uh -huh. offseason ever since he got drafted, and I'll continue to back him because I think as you should, long, yeah. I, I think guy. long term, like he will be ten times better than McKenzie at the role. But to see Isaiah McKenzie actually finding holes in the special teams and maneuvering himself, and that the seventy five yard. You know, return that was good. And that was great. And that was awesome. You want that at least once a game, right? That sets up a good position for your offense. Um, but just seeing him every single 
you know, play when he was returning kicks, be consistent. I thought that was really good. So I, I really liked Isaiah McKenzie. Um, what else did I like from the game? I mean, we, we've touched on a I lot think, right there. I, I, I don't say, think we I, can say much from the offense. I, we're going to, we're about to get into Knox. the offense. Thank Dawson you. Knox. Yes. That's, that's actually a good point. Yes. That's another one. I Dawson really Knox like Dawson great. Knox. I've, uh, this show is a big Dawson Knox supporter. I've been backing him. You've been backing him all mm-hmm. off season long. In fact, you, I have, out I have been defending him. We'll, we'll put you've it been that way. Him. Yeah. You've been defending him. I've been backing him, right? I saw on Twitter where you put out something about Gabriel Davis having drops, and if it was vice versa, what would happen, blah, blah, blah. You you got a little ratio. You weren't trying to start anything, and you said that in your Twitter. No, it was a, that was an honest question. question, yeah. It was it was very professional, and and you're right. What would have happened if, if the roles were reversed? He would have got, got absolutely murdered. Um, but somebody commented on that tweet. By the way, if you're not following on us uh, us on Twitter, go ahead and lock that down. It's at Cash Out BF. It's right there. Yeah. And then Kyle is at Kyle Knapps on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. Um, shout out to Don. She's following us now, and she talks to us all the time. So mm-hmm. um, Don love, is awesome. Love that we're seeing. Love this. We're seeing people that comment on our YouTube videos actually getting on Twitter and talking to us in our everyday lives. So that's that's awesome. So come join us. Uh, but somebody on that thread said, this, this is Dawson Knox stand account, blah, blah, blah. They're always back Dawson Knox. And I almost quote, I almost quote tweeted it and said, you're goddamn right. But I didn't. But I didn't. I kept my composure. But Dawson Knox played Look, awesome. it is. We are, we are half. We are half a Dawson Knox stan account because half. you are a Dawson Knox stan. I am. I, I think I think I fall more into the I'm a Dawson Knox defender for the time being. Like I still yeah. see that potential. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt benefit as long as doubt. he's still showing that he's improving, which he definitely did. Like the, a couple, he had three catches. One of those catches, the catch across the middle tough. for the first down, was that was a yeah. great catch that I like, I don't think anyone actually expected him to come up with, but he <laughs> did. Those are the types of plays that I want to see him make. Um, so, yep. yeah, I think that covers the things that we liked from the game just in general. Um, to bring it back to the defense real quick, we liked a lot, but we, we fully acknowledge that there is room for improvement. We are not saying that the defense was That's, absolutely uh, yeah. flawless. Like. Yeah. Please do not take that out of context. Loved what we saw from the defense in general. You hold a team to one touchdown and what was it? Three field goals. That should be yeah. enough to win. Didn't love everything <laughs> that we saw, but for the most part, we loved that. Yeah. I totally killed our transition earlier because you mentioned something about the refs. And what I was going to say is I didn't like what I saw from the refs. I did like that was on my dislikes of, I, I thought that it, it was a weird call. It was a weirdly called game. It felt like the Steelers got away with a little bit more. However, it doesn't matter. Even if the the game was called equally and it felt like it was called fairly, or even if the game was called in the Bills' favor, the Bills' offense was absolute garbage. I don't care about the yardage numbers at the end of the game. The offense was garbage for what we expected. So the offense did not play well enough despite any of the calls that were made or should have been made or whatever, it doesn't matter. The bills did not play well enough to win. So the team that deserved to win ended up winning the game, which is unfortunate. Yeah. And now we got to get into the dislikes. First thing that I did not like the opening drive. You got to score a touchdown after that McKenzie 75 yard yeah. kickoff return. You have to score a touchdown. Don't go for the big play. Just, Get a couple yards, get a couple yards, keep moving the ball forward and score. Like you don't have to go for it all at once. Can you pause right there? Because you said don't go for the big play. And I think in my dislikes, not taking what the defense is giving you is big for me. Right. Mm-hmm. And it was always the big play for Allen. And and I'm I'm not gonna go as far as, you know, overreacting and saying he can't play in front of crowds, but I think he was ju- he was juiced, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was amped up and he was like, I'm I'm going the my crowd is back here. They are you know, changing MVP at me, I'm going for the long bar every single time. And it was like, you know, I was watching NFL, you know, a network now that I work at home and I've got the TV on. I'm watching like they're, they're playing the Bills game, they're breaking it down for you. And to see them break down like, oh, yeah, you went for Sanders way down here. But if you look at the flat, there's Devin Singletary and he could have uh-huh. got 15 yards. This is the little things that he did not do this game that he would have done last season. That 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 kind of gets me. So that's one of my dislikes, not taking what the defense would give you. Yeah, I mean, we can just stay on Josh Allen right there. Just Josh Allen in general was on my dislikes. I and I I know a lot of people <laughs> don't want to blame Josh Allen. Wow. I, I didn't like the way he played. I just didn't Josh Allen. didn't like the way he played. He made a couple of plays. That touchdown throw yeah. was incredible. 
incredible yes, catch by Gabriel Davis, incredible throw by Josh Allen. But in general, Josh Allen did not play well. I, once again, I don't care about the yards at the end of the game. I don't care about any of that. What do I like? You sustain drives and you score touchdowns. That's what Josh right. Allen did last year. He did not do that this year. He didn't convert on third down when the opportunities were there on fourth down. He didn't convert on fourth down. He just did not play his best game. Everybody knows that. Josh Allen knows that. This is not saying that Josh Allen's going to have a bad yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. I fully no. expect him to have a good year. But I do think I, I, I think it might be like Kyle Brandt says it a lot, but like sugar high Josh Allen. I yes. think that we got a little bit of that because of the crowd. And like you said, not saying he can't play in front of a crowd. Fully believe he can. However, this is the first <laughs> game back. Full stand. He's amped up. Like Yes. He, I think he just tried to do too much, and it knocked him off his game a little bit. When he calms down, I fully expect that he's going to be okay, but I just didn't like that he was missing throws, easy throws at times. You want to know one of my dislikes? Um, The offensive line. I I know we're going to talk about it. but That's the the next thing I wanted to talk about. I knew it. I knew it. We're on the same wavelength right now. We're typically not. You no, we're not. No, we're not. We're typically not. Um, we hate each I, other. I've, I've, I've sat here in this chair in my man cave with my laptop open, and I've said, hey, I don't like John Feliciano as the starter. I wish we would have upgraded him. Yep. Hand um, up. I, was, I, I think I, I was wrong about that. I'm sure, you, I know we're not supposed did. to judge it one yeah. game in, yeah, but I was but wrong. You did come I, at me. I was you wrong. did come at me. You did come at me for it, and I sat here, and I was like, I just don't want him as a starter, you know, um, and I'm not going to sit there and say that during the draft process that I was banging the table for a guard because I wasn't. I, I was not. I got the lineman that I, I wanted. I also was. What? See, no. I also Kyle, was. Kyle was. Kyle wanted a guard. I I got the lineman that I wanted, and that was fine. You did, but at yeah. The same time, but at the same time, when you sign John Feliciano, and I've made this point before, when you sign him to that sort of contract, right, it's more of a backup guard contract that you're giving him um so in in my mind they they needed leave cody ford in he actually played a pretty decent game yeah we should have added that to our likes uh, honestly yeah i did i liked i like cody ford and they need to bring in um is it it's not mcgee Jeez, I'm Bocker. he's on the practice it's squad. Bocker. No, he's on I know I know Ike. Uh it's the practice squad guard. Jamil you Douglas. Know I'm terrible. Thank you, Jamil Douglas. I was sitting there thinking of I just don't know. I I don't know if I fully so agree with that, but I'll let you go. Here's on the it. thing. Here's the thing. He um he was highly toted, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Judge real quick, and he doesn't listen to the show, so it doesn't matter, he's never gonna see this. But Judge is high on this kid, right? Judge is high on this kid. I personally have not really dove deep into him, which in my opinion doesn't really matter. I'm not, I'm not really a scout, but he had a good um, preseason. He had a, he has a serviceable preseason. Um, they kept him on the practice squad for a reason. I think you bring him up and you, you rotate, right? I, you don't want to rotate, I, but let's find I hate that. I listen, hate listen, that I'm so not much. saying, let me clarify because I don't want you to rotate. No, I'm just, games. I'm just I giving think, my automatic reaction. Keep yeah, going. Yeah. 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 I, I don't want you to rotate during games. I think that's the dumbest crap in the world, right? If you have, Rotate during practice, right? Rotate during practice. Find out who is actually winning those reps. You have a good, strong feeling of what's going on. But rotate during practice and then come game day. Those are your guys. Those are your start, starting five, right? Now, if one guy's playing like dog shit, I'm not saying keep him in the game and let your MVP quarterback, you know, no, yank him out. You know, hey, look, there's open competition at this guard spot. If you are absolutely having a terrible day, you are not on this line anymore. We are switching you out. Right? I, I can't so I, I remember who I heard up. say this. It might have been Joe Marino who said it, but it's, yeah. he said that something along the lines of, and I hope it was Joe since I'm giving him credit for this. I think it was. <laughs> but he said something along the lines of the fact that they're rotating all three guards right now means that they don't believe in any of them, which is yeah. not good. That yeah. makes me nervous. I, I agree with you, though, that I believe in Cody Ford the most just based off of a one-game sample size there. He had the best game. Yeah. I'm, I'm not ready to just be like throw everybody else to the curb, throw them to the trash. They're done. I I want to I, I, like, <laughs> I I'm not I'm not Luciano. here to say that the, that the line is just dead. Yeah, I think there's ways to get through this. It might be that Feliciano is not the starter. That is entirely a possibility. It might be Ike Bakker and Cody Ford. That's fine with me. 
Whatever the best combination is, though, I just want them to find it and go with it because one of the things that I disliked was the rotating of the guards. I think that's absolute trash. I'm sorry. Like, Sean McDermott is a great head coach, but that's one of the things that he's done over his tenure in Buffalo that I've absolutely hated. I I can't stand that he won't just pick a guy and play him for the game. If somebody's not playing well, sure, you can pull them then. But why are we rotating the offensive line every couple series and not even giving them a chance to get that continuity that we all thought that they had going into last season before the injuries? And we were all hoping that would be there this year because they're all back. Why are we rotating them and then causing that issue of, well, maybe part of the reason why they're not playing well is because they don't know their spot. They don't know which spot they're going to be in, when they're going to be there. Like they're just playing everywhere because they're just rotating. So just quit doing that. It you find the spot for them, play them there, and if a guy's not playing well, then we can pull him. Just the, I hate facts. the rotating offensive no, line. That's that's facts. Um, um, the offensive line just in general though was bad. Yeah, guards were bad. Like terrible. Far too much pressure up the middle. Deion Dawkins was also bad. Daryl Williams was also bad. Like there was nobody on the offensive line who was good. It wasn't just the the guards. Yeah. It was, it was the offensive line in general that was bad. So there was just about no good takeaways from that other than Cody Ford probably played his best game. I do want to circle back around. Now they were bad and, and I'm not making excuses for them, but I do want to just point out Melvin Ingram and, um, Oh, the Steelers credit uh, to them. Baby, baby. What? Yeah. Yeah. They're still that dude. Yeah, yeah, Melvin Ingram can. He's still that. I he we still play. we uh yeah. we underestimated their effect. I think honestly, I think what we did, I think we did a mix of underestimating them and overestimating the Bills' offensive line. I correct because last yes. week we we did not speak very highly of the Steelers' defense, and we were wrong. I I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it real with you. I personally thought that the linebacking core was their strongest focal point heading into the so the, did I. the season and then it, it comes and I my buddy texted me and he said he said do you do you think that the Steelers defensive line is good or is your line just this bad and I said I'm I'm gonna be real honest with you I I want to throw this game in the trash I don't want to take anything that happened in this game and actually focus on it when it comes to the mm-hmm. line because our line might be that bad and their defensive line might be that good, right? But at this game, I, I want to take it out. Um, yeah, I want to see more before I make that official determination of it was because of X or whatever. Yes, yes. Yeah. I have I have one more dislike. Do you have okay. any dislikes you have? I got a couple more, but they'll be quick. Okay, um, you go and then I'll go. All right, uh, third down execution. I touched on that already. Third down, fourth down, it was all bad. That rolls into the next two, which is play calling and McDermott's coaching decisions. I separated that because play calling is obviously Dable. That fourth down play call, when it's fourth and one, I think the 41-yard line, what the hell are we doing? (laughs) I know that that was the play that Drew Bledsoe ran for a touchdown to Willis McGahee (laughs) back in what, like 2003 or 2004, whenever it was. I, I don't care what the play call was, why it was. That was a terrible play call. It was It was a bad play call. It was also poorly executed. You know, it just you know wasn't a good time to do that. <laughs> you know what it reminds me of? Mm. I don't know. I don't know if you remember back in way back in the day. Um, I say way back in the day. Pat Ma- Ma- Pat McAfee. Was oh the yeah, was the I think calls. Ryan. I think Ryan was, tweeted this out. Yeah, did he? Was, did he? So I've been off. I think he I've been did, off yeah. Twitter. I've been trying to focus on my personal life and my yeah. There, so it was their punt Twitter. formation where it was just it was like, the why are we doing this? <laughs> that's, that's what it like. Yeah. Where I forget it was the wide receiver Austin somebody and uh, he, he's not Austin Collie. Yeah, he's, Austin Collie's not supposed to hike the ball and he hikes it to Pat McAfee and there's literally no one. They got everybody him. else lined up wide. Yeah, yeah it was it was. Yes. I mean, it was literally that's, what the hell are we doing here? Yeah. And as you're watching that, I don't know about you. As I'm watching that, I wasn't even – I didn't yeah. yell. I, like, I did not yell at the TV. I didn't do anything. I just looked at, I looked at my fiance. I was like, wait, did I just <laughs> – please tell me I didn't just see that. And she's over yes. there all excited. But I'm, I'm yeah. just sitting there like, this isn't real life. That wasn't, that wasn't the play call because it was just that – it was that bad. So let's just, let's just kick that to the curb. That's one I'm cool yeah. with kicking to the curb. Let's not do okay. that again. But it's just in general, in. fourth down, third down, 
it didn't it didn't work well. Sean McDermott's decisions of when to go for it, and I actually do have um, I have some screenshots of uh, when he went for it and when he didn't. And uh, this is Wake Jackins. I think I said that right. Um, but he said he he actually just put it all out of like when they went for it and when they didn't. First quarter, fourth and five on the Pittsburgh nineteen. They kicked the field goal. Obviously, that's fine. We would have wanted a touchdown, but in that situation, the field goal, whatever. Fourth and 14 on the Buffalo 45, it was a punt. Fourth and one on the Buffalo 46, that was a punt. That was the first questionable decision, just in general. Then we go fourth and third on the Pittsburgh 43, that's a punt. That's extremely questionable. Why are we not just kicking the field goal there? That that comes back to Tyler Bass, and I was waiting for you to make that transition. Let's use Tyler Bass more. Fleur State had an awesome kicker back in the day, uh, uh, Roberto Aguayo. He was not good in the NFL. I don't want to bring that NFL. up. But in 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 college, when Florida, and I'm a big Florida State fan, if you can't tell, but in college, when they crossed, you know, um, midfield, right? I was like, you know what? When they crossed 50, I was like, you know what? We got three points. We just got three points, right? And that's how Bills Mafia should feel when we cross mm-hmm. the 50 with Tyler Bass, right? He can make it. And he can make it 50, 55 plus. I, I'm sure he's good from 55 plus, right? Has he made one from 55 plus? I think yet. He, I, I know he's like done he 50. I know for a fact he's done 54. <laughs> I think he has. So actually, this is what I was about to say, though. That one, I can understand not kicking the field goal because that would be a 60 yard field goal. But that's, that's a situation fine. where you go for it. Yeah. Yeah. So and it, you, that's, you're that's a dead just man, a so. bad decision. And then to follow that up, we have the third quarter. It was fourth and eight. And they went for it. That's a time where you kick the field goal. That was they were on the 35 at that point. You kick the field goal. Tyler Bass can make that. You you drafted him for his leg. It was a close game. In a there's a lot of situations where I'm cool with if the score, if it's a run up the score type of game, yeah, sure, go for it. This was a grind it out, take all the points you can get type of game. Once you realize that, you take all the points you can get. And Sean McDermott did not do that when he decided to go for it instead of kicking the field goal there. And then once again, fourth and one on the Pittsburgh 41 in the fourth quarter. They, I think they ran the ball with Matt Breda. That was just, I, I don't mind going for it there, but it doesn't make sense when you're not going for it in another situation. So I just think the, that was all, it was, it was just poor decision making, I think, all around from the game. I didn't like the drop yeah. passes, there was far too many of them. It wasn't just yeah. one guy. Gabriel Davis, Emmanuel Sanders, Cole Beasley, like multiple players had drop passes. Didn't like that. And then just let's just wrap it up in a nice little bun the entire second half, if we're being honest. Like you want to wrap it up with the the blocked kick because that play was horrible. I hated everything about that. And obviously, like it's not like they ran a bad play, but that was horrible that they did that. Like you can't let that kick get blocked. That was just a momentum changer. So I just didn't like anything really about the second half. It felt like they built all that momentum on that last drive in the first half, and then they just let it all go as soon as they got the ball back in the second half. So that's that's my dislike. Do you have anything to add on that? Yes, um, and this this might be controversial. I don't know if it was on Twitter. Okay. So if it was on if it was on Twitter, um, don't crucify me once again. I'm, <laughs> I've, I've, I haven't been on I haven't been on Twitter. I don't know. Um, I wasn't impressed with Gabriel Davis. Um, I thought he had. I thought he had one good catch. And and let me let me get through it all before you come at me. I thought he had one good catch. It was in the end zone. But outside of that, it was more like, hey man, like you're supposed to be quote unquote the number two wide receiver. And what what us as fans have said that. And then he came out and it looked like maybe conditioning wasn't right. Um, he was getting winded. He was, he, he got injured a little bit. Um, that's not his fault. Injuries do happen, but the drops, man, the drops I felt were unexcusable. Right. Um, yeah. So- and I, I've seen back and forth where I've seen him credited with one drop. I've seen him credited with two either way. There was at least two, two balls that he should have caught. I will give him credit in the, like the touchdown catch was incredible. And his second yes. catch in the game was also very good. So I think he did have like when he caught the ball, his two catches, they were very good. However, but he didn't have like it wasn't a consistent game from him. I'll give you that. Yes. And I think that's the one thing that I was kind of disappointed at. And it was like, 
you know, you made a good point that he his catch or his, his drop radio, whatever it was, was higher than Dawson Knox, right? You made a point with that. I'm not saying that he's to that point yet, but he doesn't is need to be or he doesn't give a shit what we think on the internet. It's gonna come <laughs> to the point where he's going to be labeled the new Dawson Knox if he doesn't start catching some of these easy balls, right? Okay, so this is I, a perfect what, time. This is a perfect time to transition to our next <laughs> topic i just want to see him be more consistent go all right that is a good time (laughs) to uh transition to the next topic which is the favorite overreactions that we heard and i think that's not quite on the list but i think that's an overreaction personally as much as i've been trying to use gabriel davis's drops to try and (laughs) get some heat off of the heat from dawson knox yeah as much as I've been using that, I just I don't agree that it's the exact same. And I've tried to make that abundantly clear every single time I've used yeah. him for that because he has made far and wide more plays than Dawson Knox, despite yes. Dawson Knox being in the league a full year longer. Gabriel Davis has done more in the time he's been with the Bills. And he's done it more consistently because obviously he's put up better numbers. Sure. But he definitely needs to I mean he needs to improve on the drops. You can't have those plays happen if you're supposed to be quote unquote I, th- I think what bothers me about this the most is that he he's we say he's the number two or the number three or whatever he is the fourth option on this team it was he made is. clear when the bills only played him for whatever 35 snaps 40 snaps whatever it was when uh every like cole beasley emmanuel sanders stefan diggs they played almost 100 percent of the offensive snaps So it was made clear that he is the fourth wide receiver. So he's probably not getting covered by the number two corner. Yeah. Like the focus of the defense is not on Gabriel Davis. So he's not going against the better talent. The focus is not on him, which means I expect when the ball goes his way that he's going to be able to make those plays, which is the same thing that I expect for Dawson Knox. Yes. The difference being that Dawson Knox actually did it this week Gabriel Davis did it on two plays and didn't do it on like two or three other plays. So like it was just up and down for him, but that that's not one of the biggest overreactions that we saw by any means. Did you, do you have one or do you want me to roll through mine? You, you roll through yours. Um, I stayed off of social media this week. Um, I think I I did. I did. What I I just trying to focus on work. Um, You know, I started a new job, whatever. Um, so I was trying to focus on that. And then, of course, the loss. I could care less to get on uh, and see everything. But I think, you know, there was a lot of overreactions. The biggest one that I saw um, was, by the way, I left every single Bills Mafia Facebook group that I could. I left every single one of them uh, because, and this was way before this, but because the overreaction there were crazy. But I saw, should we trade for um, Tyrod? Um, that was one of, that was one we, of the ones I was going to Yeah, should we oh. trade for Tyrod? Um, yep. Yeah, shut up. Um, anyways, you, you can go. You can go ahead and, and do yours. By the way, no, if you're, that was if you're that was the first one I was going to say. If you're listening at home, um, go ahead and tweet us unprovoked with with no you know um, hints at all of why you're doing it. Go ahead and tweet us your favorite overreactions. Yeah, um, and if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and comment your overreactions down below or your favorite ones that you saw or yours personally. Whatever, I don't judge you. I yeah, so I I'm gonna roll through. Uh, I think I have three here, and then I'm going to give you my actual favorite one. Um, the should we trade for Tyrod Taylor just in case? That's what we have Mitch Trubisky for. He is there just in case, but he's not a just in case of play. He's a just in case of injury. Why do yeah. people think that we need another backup quarterback or a backup quarterback in general as a just in case for Josh Allen? You don't pay the man if you don't believe him. Exactly. We believe in him. Like, just stop asking for that. He had a bad game, one bad game. It's okay. How dare him? How dare him? Yeah. 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 You know what? You're right. Get him out of here. Cut him. Get rid of him. One bad game. We cannot stand one bad game from Josh Allen. Get him out of Buffalo. He doesn't deserve to be. No, I I don't understand why people actually go that far with their. Like, that's a really bad overreaction. I just edited this podcast. That would be a promo. 
that would be a promo if I edited this podcast. But it's not. Uh, of of me get, saying, get Josh get, Allen out of here. Get Josh Allen out of town. It would be a promo. I'd put it out. It would well, go good out. thing Kendall um, does our promos and not us, right? Yeah, um, next one is we did, somebody wanted to see jo- uh, Trubisky push Josh Allen a bit more. Just a I general that overreaction. Yeah, that, that, that was that was a, a WGR caller. I think Sal put that out. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was – Matt Perino put out a tweet about – uh, Josh Allen went 10 for 23 in the first half against the Steelers nine months ago. He went 16 of 26 in today's first half. Um, and then somebody commented, this is why you play Moss. Perino responded with Singletary is very good in pass protection because they were talking about pass protection. And somebody responded, and I, it was uh, Biological Marty on Twitter, said Singletary should be You're just tired. calling him out. Yeah, You're I'm going to call people out for this. That's part. That's <laughs> one of the fun parts out. of the segment. Biological Marty said Singletary should be cut. That's an overreaction because what did he do on the field to show that? Yeah, the worst part is he's probably he's probably joking when he says this, but also it's social media. Social media is a terrible place. I don't know. Like there's there's so many overreactions that my mind it. is just blown to pieces <laughs> that I don't know what's an overreaction and what's not. It. The one thing I'm certain of is that the next one that I have, my favorite one, definitely is an overreaction. And it was I'm ready for this it one. was a like he he mean, he meant this. I put out a I put out one of our promos that uh, Kendall edited for uh, Dawson or not Dawson Knox for uh, Deion Dawkins. It was when you were not on the show because you were out on uh, paternity leave, and I was talking about Deion Dawkins. I had that thrown out onto a bunch of the different Facebook groups, and obviously, like it was months ago. I haven't received any sort of comments on it, so I haven't looked on yeah. that after the game. I, I like to go on to Facebook to clear my notifications, but I saw there was a comment notification, so I clicked on it. Notice it was on the Dawson, the or I keep saying Dawson Knox, the Deion Dawkins post. This I'm so dude, ready for this. I he was talking about months. how good Deion Dawkins. Yeah, he went back months to find this, so he he remembered this, or for some reason it just popped up, which I just don't believe with with how long no, ago uh-huh. it was. Tom Bourgeois, I think that's how you say his name. I don't know. Okay. He said today proved he should be cut. We're we're gonna. It's so terrible, such a terrible take. Nap cut his mic. He said, "Nope, your mic is out. Your mic is out, dude. I can't hear you at all. This is there terrible." Go. There you go. We're, it was we're yeah. You're Deion good. Dawkins on yeah, his we're first cut game Deion. back because he didn't play his absolute best game. He played a bad game. I get that, but you want to cut one of the top 10 left tackles in the NFL because yes. he had a bad game week one of the NFL season after having COVID to the point where he was hospitalized. Like <laughs> he didn't just have it where he didn't even have symptoms. He didn't have minor symptoms. He was hospitalized. We know for a fact that his body was like mangled from COVID. And you want to cut this dude because he yes. wasn't a hundred percent himself. Are you yes. serious? <laughs> He proved, what are we doing he proved, here? <laughs> he proved that he is not a good left tackle during this. Yeah, he no, he that. is trash. Why, no, He's, he like why? Why do people take that and they're, they go automatically to that? Oh my goodness, he's so bad. I we, we've had is good. we've had conversations before, um, and I I've said I hate fans to you before. But it's yeah. like it's the littlest things that people say that really irk me, and it's stuff like that. It's like, hey man, like I and I get that we're all fans of the football team, but it's like, um, no, that's dumb. Don't be dumb, right? Just yeah. don't, just don't be dumb. Just please. Now, you don't could be ask. Dumb. You could you could ask a question. Like I'm okay with people asking if he if he had poise. What do you think about this game? Right? What do you think about him being a good left tackle after this game? Are we worried about it? Does do it you change your perception of? Does it change your perception? Yeah. Asking asking a fun. question, asking a question like that, and legitimately not knowing right if he is good in in your eyes, not knowing how to just look at which he, you can just you can look at him, you can just know he's a good left tackle, but just looking at him and not knowing, and then asking a simple question to other people that might know more about the situation or just know more about the topic in that, general. That's not that's us, not. by the way. That's not us. That's not. No, don't ask us. We're talking about like <laughs> smarter people. Like, uh, well, we don't really have anybody smart that works at the. Uh, um, <laughs> but like other just smart go people, talk to Ryan, are, apparently, go talk yeah, to go Ryan. Say, oh, no. Don't talk. Don't talk to Ryan. Me and Ryan yeah, talk. No, we'll we'll and, cut that. We'll cut that. 
we we have we we talk we it's not text chat it's just me and him texting um but we send our spicy takes that we can't share on twitter because we'll get crucified so if i'm just sick of being ratioed on twitter i'll just text him and be like this is what i'm thinking he'll be like dude i agree right or he'll it's do the same thing, thing you don't send those to me all the time you do I sometimes don't. but it's a good thing you don't send them to me all the time because i would definitely just tweet it out just tweet I'm it out you for me me and ryan think similar he just yells louder than me yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, yeah, so those are my that was my favorite overreaction of the week is that Dawson or not? What? Mm. Mm, Deion try it Dawkins. Again. Yeah, there yeah. Just we'll just we'll just cut that, run it back. My favorite overreaction of the week <laughs> was that Deion Dawkins should be cut because of his performance against Melvin Ingram and T.J. Watt, two of the <laughs> like T.J. Watt is one of the best defensive linemen in the entire NFL. So, yeah, no, just cut Deion Dawkins because he didn't have a, a great game. Week one. Lost, Whatever. Yeah, you know what? While we're at it, let's cut Taylor Lewan from the Titans because he had a horrible game against Chandler Jones, like absolutely horrendous. So he must be just trash at that point. If he can't play good against one of the best, you know, it, coming off injury also, you know, like if you can't recover, I'm sorry, you're not good. Apparently that's what Facebook thinks at this point. Facebook is just a horrible place. I'm not going to lie. Um, so, so, we yeah, have that's – Winners and losers of the week from do you want do you have them? I didn't want to go through it real like real long. Well, I was gonna say real quick. I was gonna I was gonna say um, we have 15 minutes. Do you want to discuss the game? Yes. Let me give my winner and loser of the week, and then we'll do the game. Um, okay. Winners. Actually, I'm gonna yeah, we'll do winners first. Winner of the week. I have former Bills players as the winner of the week because Zay Jones and Tyrod both had really big good. moments or. Big games. Tyrod played great. He won with the Texans, which I don't think a lot of people saw coming. I think even though it was against the Jaguars, a lot of people had the Jaguars in that game. Yeah. Tyrod balled out. Didn't see it coming myself. And then Zay Jones had that incredible game winner on the Monday Night Football game. Winners of the week, former Bills players. Losers of the week. Um, I, I'm going to go with me. I am the loser of the week because uh, – I went one and four on my picks for the week. That's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. I personally, I went one and three. Uh, Twitter went zero oh and one. So thank you, Twitter. You lost me money this week. Uh, hopefully, you'll do better next week. Polls should be out by the time you're listening to this. Go vote. Um, but I, I was the loser of the week because my picks were bad. But I got screwed over. The Titans and the Cardinals not hitting the over. That was that was BS. They were at the over. They were one point shy going into the fourth quarter. I was going to say, that's wild. Point. That that screwed me. Uh, that's the yeah. one that really upset me. Obviously, I bet the Bills. That didn't go in my favor either. So I'm the loser of the week. Um, all right. Big game this week, though. Got a game yes. against the Dolphins, and I put out a Twitter poll. Is this game this is a hilarious. must win, or is it a can't lose? Now, they're, they're the same thing, but they're not at the same time. Um, <laughs> Did you see the final results of the poll? No, I didn't. I saw I saw you put it out there. I saw somebody say, with all due respect, what's the difference? And I was yeah. like, well, I got yeah. you. Hey, I agree. Well, that I mean, that was, yeah. I mean, what's what's the difference? There is no difference, yeah. but the weird spot is that, like, there also, there also kind of is a difference. And I, I yeah. think, who was it? Somebody actually replied with a good explanation of what the difference was, but I, I don't think I could find it right now. But it was in general like a must-win game kind of says that the team that you're playing is actually good and a can't lose yeah. would mean like you're playing against the Jets. Like if, you, if you're not playing yeah. well and you go against the Jets, you can't lose that game. You go yeah. into Kansas City, that's a – do you want to prove you're good? You, you got to win. That's a must-win game. It's that type yeah. of thing. So the poll ended up being right. This is a must-win game. If it's going to be a must-win or a can't lose – this was a this is a must win game coming up for the Bills against the Dolphins because the Dolphins are one and zero. You you must I, win this game. I think they will, and I'm trying. I think they will. Too. I'm trying. I'm trying not to be a homer. Um, this game does not scare me as other games do later on down the road, um, but I think they do. You know, Josh Allen historically, uh, every time he goes, you know, to South Beach, he plays phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, I think he's going to have a good game. I think he sits back and he realizes, hey, like anytime he, he has a bad game, 
historically speaking, when he has a bad game, he turns around, figure out what he did, and he tries to improve on that. And that's one thing that I like about Josh Allen. So I think he'll sit back. He'll learn from his mistakes, right? He'll try to improve on that. I think the offensive line will be slightly better. I'm not going to say it's going to be fixed, but I think it will be slightly better because I think they start to learn, you know, uh, what protections they need to do and all that good stuff. Um, and then I think they lean on the run game more because they're, they're probably looking at the dime packages that I think the Steelers were in dime package. NFL said 98% of the time. Um, I think Ooh. they blitzed on 1%. They, no, it was three. Yeah, they barely they, blitzed. Barely. Blitzed. They blitzed three times. So they were getting pressure with four um, and they had nine um, out there. So at that point, I think that they start leaning on Singletary a little bit more because you know, it just is what it is. So I would like to see, you know, the game plan change a little bit, not necessarily to run the ball more, but if you see a dime package, give Josh Allen that option to check it out. Let's check it out. Yeah, Let's when check. when you when you see a dime, check it out. Yeah, check it out. And at the end of the day, if you're running it up, they're going to change. They're going to change it. And at that point, it's, it's free-for-all. So having the opportunity to know when to change, when to audible um, into a different play, I think that's what's going to take Josh Allen from the, hey, finished here in the MVP votes to being an MVP is learning how to audible at the line of scrimmage a little bit more effectively, I should say, because he audibles now. Yeah, 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 he does. Um, so I have I have a couple of general talking points for the for the game, and then we can give our over-unders, score prediction, all that stuff. Uh, two players I, I, I'm watching this week for the Dolphins on offense, Jalen Waddle, Mike Gusecki. I don't know if you have anybody different, but I think Jalen Waddle – as a wide receiver, just in general, he makes me nervous because of his speed. If if he can utilize that speed, get behind the defense, like he, he definitely has the speed to do it. That worries me. I don't know if it worries me as much because Tua is his quarterback, but he personally worries me. Obviously, Mike Gusecki, we know what he can do. We've seen what he can I do love against him. the Bills. I love him, but I also yeah. hate him because I don't want to yeah. see him play against the Bills. He scares me. You, like, he's one of the best tight ends in the NFL. We know yes, the Bills kind of struggle against tight ends. So how are the Bills going to be able to stop him is going to be one of the major factors of the game. So that's who I'm watching on offense because the Bills, I think they're going to have to key in on them. You could go with uh, a Miles Gaskin if you wanted to. I do like Miles Gaskin. Running back. He's a good player. Yeah. If you take away their yeah, running I, game, it forces Tua to make more plays, which yes. we know – he is, he's not a real playmaker. He is more of a game manager type of quarterback. I I, I think I retweeted a video do of you, it. Get him off his first. <laughs> do you do you dislike Tua as much as I dislike Lamar Jackson? <laughs> uh, is that a good comparison? So he, the the thing is, I don't dislike Tua. I just don't believe in him. See, and that's that's how I am with Lamar, right? I don't dislike him to the point where it's like, oh my goodness, I can't stand you, right? It's more of I don't believe that he is a pocket passer, right? Well, and, and okay, that's okay. Hold on, and hold on. We're we're getting we off topic. Know, we're getting we off topic. Lamar is not a, a pocket passer. Oh, please trust me. that. Were you watching the game on on Monday night? <laughs> right. The you're announcers. Right, you're right. We're, we're about to get we're way just, off topic. The announcers were all about <laughs> Lamar being a pocket. Look at he improved here, and he. I uh, I was not watching six, Monday Night Football with he, uh, the. He sound missed out. six throws. And, he missed six throws in a in a row, and I just laughed. And they're like, you know, he improved. Mm-hmm. What did he improve on? It, right. His offensive line wasn't there. Oh, shut up. No one cares. He's not a pocket I, passer. He needs to improve. I will say this about Lamar when we get back on subject. He did improve slightly. I did like he was a little bit more accurate with the ball downfield. So I was like, okay, Lamar, I can see you coming up. But I you know, still don't like him as a pocket passer. Yeah, but you, the, my, you my, sent me, my point you sent me that, that text. I was not watching with the sound on. I, I'm not going to lie. I was I was watching Bachelor in Paradise. And then I had the I football on my laptop. I was about to say, did you at least laugh? No one even laughed. No one even laughed at the gif. Yeah, I we, didn't, I didn't, like, <laughs> we didn't give you any sort of reaction. My, uh, my, wife, my yeah. wife laughed at me, though. She was like, why do you not like Lamar Jackson? Somebody, I was like, man. I said, I said, and she said, why don't you like Lamar Jackson? I was like, he can't throw the ball. Like, he doesn't scare me throwing the ball. And literally, she starts watching the game. He misses one throw, misses another throw, misses another throw. And she goes, oh, I see it now. And I was like, yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, she doesn't even watch football. He's an incredible anyway, player. Really fun to watch. But do yeah, you, he doesn't throw do the you, ball. Do you dislike Tua as much as I dislike Lamar? That's an honest question. I, I Is don't he your think Lamar Jackson? That, I don't think it's to that extent because I do think that – like I I think he has a lot of redeeming qualities, but I just don't see the it factor with him. 
I think there's a so big difference. I, I think well, Lamar, Lamar has a that it factor. Yeah, he has I just don't factor. think Lamar he has does. all of those other qualities that you want in terms of being that pocket passer of can he make the accurate throws? Like he doesn't do and that as well right now. So I think while, I think while it's we're different. on, but I like I believe in Lamar, just different uh, ways well, than other people would. I, guess. Uh, I was about to say while we're on the subject, I'm not comparing one on one Lamar to yeah. Tua. So before you say that they're two different quarterbacks, I know 100 percent they're two different quarterbacks. I'm just comparing I guess he them would between be. me and in, in that sense. Me. I guess he would be then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I would take it the Lamar Jackson approach is what you want to do with Tua this game is you want to stop the run game, right? And you want to force him to throw, which is exactly what you say. Get him off his first read and we should be fine. Should be mm-hmm. is the keyword. Yes. Um, so then my my two players to watch on defense, Christian Wilkins, Xavier Howard. I was actually going to keep both of the guys on the defensive line if Raekwon Davis was going to play. Him not playing is massive because if you have him and Christian Wilkins in there, I know they're not anywhere close to the level of what Pittsburgh has, but if you have both of those guys on the defensive line, it makes me a little bit nervous after what I saw from the offensive line from the Bills last week. But Christian Wilkins, he can make some things happen. And then obviously you know Xavier and Howard, he is a ball hawk. As long as he's out there, he can like there's always the potential that he could end up picking the ball off. I know Josh Allen has picked this team apart, but Xavier Howard is a baller and there's like there's no two ways about it. So those are the two guys I have on defense to watch. Jerome Baker's another name out there. Very good linebacker, very underrated linebacker. Definitely a guy to pay attention to, but didn't quite make the cut for the top two. Um, the keys to the game. I have to, well, I want to. I want to. Oh, you want to add? Um, I, I want to add one player, and I, I had to actually Google it and do some research. We talked how bad um, Deion Dawkins looked. Um, I want to talk about Austin Jackson. Um, him coming back. Right, him being the left tackle, mm-hmm. they moved up that offensive oh, yeah. line. Their, their they, offensive line situation is a little weird, right? Now. Yes. So I want to see. You know, we talked about, hey, well, this defensive line didn't get any sacks. I kind of want to just straight up be like, hey, we're probably going to see more. They, sa- and they, they did get some sacks. Yeah, they just weren't flashy sacks. And I, I think we we start to see the third and long, and all of a sudden we get a sack because Austin Jackson is coming back from uh, injury or COVID. Which one was it? I. Um, I can't remember. I, I was trying I, to not, look. I'm not going to say one and make myself feel stupid. I just honestly it was, don't remember. It was it was uh, a, a COVID reserve. He was on the COVID nineteen okay. list. It, so, um, and of course, I'm, I'm not going to sit there and, and speculate and anything like that. But we talk about Deion Dawkins coming back from the COVID reserve um, list and then how he played. I want to see how Austin Jackson does for a second game in a row. I think he played during uh, against the Patriots, but I want to see it one more time. Um, and I think that uh, we, we see kind of a you know a mix of. Uh, you know, pass from our dudes alone. Yeah, you're not you're not going to speculate, but here we go speculating. Well, I'm not going to speculate on injury. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to speculate on injury. I'm just, I'm just right? messing with you. Yeah, so that actually is a good good segue into the first key to the game because I have just literally win the trenches as the first key to the game. I don't think this just sticks to the offensive line or the defensive line. I think it's both. You're not going – we know football is a game that is won in the trenches. You can have all of the talented players in the world, but if you don't win the line of scrimmage, you're not going to win the game. It's just not going to happen. We saw that in the Super Bowl. The Chiefs are a great team. They have talent everywhere, but they got demolished on the line of scrimmage. That's exactly what happened with the Bills this past week. They got demolished on the line of scrimmage on offense. So they didn't – they couldn't make things happen consistently. The Bills need to show us, and it's not a – once again, going back to the beginning of the, the show, we said that – well, it is, I said, I'm, I'm not willing to just throw everyone into the trash from this offensive line. I think there's things to work through. I think there are players who maybe should not be playing. But in general, I think they can figure it out. This is a figure-it-out game. You need to show some sort of improvement. Does it need to be yes. perfect? No, but the offensive line needs to be better than they were a lot better than they were last week. Every player improves just a a little bit. The offensive line as a whole improves a lot. So the offensive line needs to be better. The defensive line, do what you did last week. I want to see what you did last week again because they started the game off by getting pressure. I think they got pressure on Ben like 25% of the time, which is really good when I think it was Hansel said, or he found the stat that it was like Ben was getting the ball out in 2.5 seconds. Real fast. Yeah, absolutely stupid. Yeah, real fast. And Tua's another quarterback who he likes to get the ball fast if you can make him hold the ball. 
then there's he has some issues in his game. If the Bills can get after him, cause cause him to run a little bit, cause him to hold on to the ball, cause him to get off of his first read, then the defensive line will have done their job. This would be an awesome game to get three or four sacks as a team. But if they can't get sacks, I want them to be able to lay a body on Tua. I want them to be able to get some hurries. I want them to be able to force him out of the pocket, force him to in, into some uncomfortable throws. We literally saw after the game against the Patriots, was it J.C. Jackson said something like Tua, and I'm paraphrasing very much here, but Tua pretty much just throws the ball up when he doesn't get his first read. I think yep. I think the book is out on him a little bit. If you can force him out of his first read, he's going to struggle a lot. Getting pressure on him is gonna it's gonna help immensely. If you can get pressure on Tua, you're gonna cause a lot of problems for that Dolphins offense. This this game, and I'm that was sure my number two, by the way, is pressure. I was about to say, yeah. if you still have keys to the game, I, I get it. But I do want to point out that um, we have we have this game coming up, and we have one, two. We have three games, including this Sunday, before we play the Chiefs. Um, and I think that if you want you, – you made a good point. This is figure it out, right? Mm-hmm. Figure out what your identity is on offense. If you throw the ball 50 times a game, then it's throw the ball 50 times a game. But do it – relax. Relax. Take what the defense gives you if you're going to throw it 50 times a game. Take what mm-hmm. the defense gives you, right? We saw uh, quarterbacks have success doing that this weekend, which was Dak. Dak did it. Um Freaking Las Vegas did it as well, right? Derek Carr did it. So these quarterbacks are finding success by throwing the ball 50 times a game, but you need to relax and take what the defense gave you. So uh, figure it out and go into the Chiefs with with a win coming out of the Texans. Yeah, and that is actually a good segue in my third key to the game because I literally just have Josh Allen as my key to the game because relax. he cannot play the way he played against the Steelers. I know he was under pressure on like 50% of his dropbacks. That's really bad. He also wasn't great on the other 50%. Like, yeah. he just didn't have a good game. I believe he's going to be better this game. He should be better this game. The stats of what he's done against the Dolphins say he's going to be better this game. But now I just want to see him go out there and actually do it. He needs to be better. It's just plain and simple. Josh Allen, he doesn't have to make all of the big plays every single time. He doesn't. We know that. He, doesn't. he knows that himself. I think that's the thing that kills us the most is that he knows that. He tells us that. After, like That's one of the first things he says after the game. You need to stop just trying to go for the big play. Just Like you said, just take what the defense gives you and move on. Because we did that last year, and then you were able to take advantage of some other big plays because you were able to actually yes. get like a – be able to get a flow to the offense. And when this Bills offense gets that flow, when they get rolling, when Dable's calling the right plays, when Josh Allen's hitting the open wide receiver and he's playing against Miami, we like yeah, we know big games are possible in those scenarios. So those are those are my keys to the game. Um, I have a bold prediction, and then we will do our over under and score prediction. I think I think Allen has a huge bounce back game this week. Okay. I think he goes 350, four TDs, and no turnovers. And I think that I think that's a bold prediction considering what we saw last week because that would be like day and night. Because that yeah. would mean that he plays a consistent game. It's not just, oh, I want to see the numbers. And it's not just because, oh, we saw him do this stuff last year. It's partially because it's the Dolphins and we've seen him do it consistently against the Dolphins. But also, I think he's he has that mentality of, let me bounce back. Let me get back on track. I know where I messed up. I'm going to fix it this week, and I'm just going to go out and ball. So I, I think Josh Allen has a big week. <clears throat> um, I think Devin Singletary has a big week. I think they start giving what the defense – gives them and I think a lot of these coaches are going to see hey how does he adjust by moving and dime right we know the offensive line is not that good right let's send four and let's put everybody else in dime um I think they start leaning on Devin Singletary I think he has a couple of another big runs and we cut him so that's my bold prediction <laughs> he has a couple of big runs <laughs> and we cut him <laughs> and uh, Facebook is just going to be right <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Over uh, look, Devin Singletary, I mean, he he has – as long as he gets in front of the line of scrimmage, and we said this last week, as long as he gets in front of the line of scrimmage before oh, he gets quit. hit, he's, shifty. he's going to be able to make some – like he's going to be able to do some damage on the defense. That's where he does his best. Make a man miss when he's in front of the line of scrimmage. He can he can do some damage. All right, over under. What do you have it at right now? Because I know since I last looked at it, when I last saw the over under was at forty eight. It might have moved by now, and it probably has moved by the time you're listening to this. But we can only give you the information we have at the time. I was about to say I like I like forty eight. Um, if it is forty eight, I'm I'm going to take the it's four forty seven point five. Um, and what's, even, what's even I mean, funnier? That's even better. I hate when it's on a, yeah. a over. exact number. Yeah. Over under 47.5, which is absolutely hilarious because um, my score prediction um, was um, 34 to 13 uh, Buffalo winning, um, and that's 47 points. So that's absolutely hilarious. Um, I guess I'll take the under since I'm going to lean heavily on my um, my game prediction. So I'm going to take the under uh, 47.5. Okay, I, I have to – I'm going to lean on my game prediction. I'll give that in a second, but I have to take the over because of my game prediction. Um, I think the yeah. Bills offense matches up really well against the Dolphins defense, just the way they play and not having Raquan Davis on that defensive line, I think makes a big difference. I think we were incorrect last week when we said having one of your best defensive linemen is not going to make a huge difference having or not having, we were very wrong about that. I'm not making that mistake again this week. When you don't have one of your best best defensive linemen, when you can't cause problems for the offensive line as well as you would have, I think that makes a big difference. I think this is going to be a big bounce back game for the Bills, and I think the Bills are going to score some points. But I think because the Bills end up scoring some points, maybe the Dolphins get – I think they're going to be able to keep it close for the first half, and then the Bills pull away in the second half. I don't want – I don't want it to be close at all, but I think the over hits. Um, do you think the Bills cover? Uh, minus 3.5, yes. Yes. Right. Yeah, I got. The, I have them covering again this week, too. And yeah. uh, I bet them to cover last week. I don't think I'm going to bet them this week. I think I'm going to stay away from that. I think one of my bets this week is probably going to be a Josh Allen prop bet. Um, so stay tuned on that. But hmm. I have them I have them covering that's, hey, that's That's when you get in trouble. You start looking at them prop bets. Hey, I was looking y'all, at the prop bets from Monday Night Football yeah. too. <laughs> y'all, y'all went in on me like you're not that good. It's like, dude, I only sent you the player props. Like, I'm good against the spread. Like, I don't know what I you're know, telling you. Know. Like, Look, I just suck I, at the. I went I in on you because props. you. I went in on you because you. Bet I a heavy favorite, and you bet that money line. That's what I went in on you for. I don't. I don't. I didn't go in on you though. about your other bets. It I was didn't because just you bet do Tampa straight up, and it was. I bet him. And I parlayed them together. It wasn't just a straight up bet. It was parlayed. It was parlayed. Yeah. What what can I tell you? It was parlayed. It wasn't like I was like five dollars on Tampa to win two. No, it was Tampa plus the Bills to win four hundred and forty eight dollars. You would have done the same thing. Don't kill me. Um, I, this, I didn't do this week. Thing, I took though. this week. I did all spreads. So you leave me alone about the money line because that's too easy in, in Kyle Knapp. And yeah, I'm going to try and force you to be a better gambler. <laughs> Yeah, I'm perfect. Um, I am really good at Thursday night. I am really good winning, at Thursday did night. Did you have a I, winning weekend last weekend? I did. Yeah, I went seventy five percent, so I went three and one. Um, All right, which is I'm getting back to you. I, you know, I, I last year I was like, I'm gonna bet every single game. And it's like some games I just don't feel comfortable betting on, right? And I think that's just the average gambler. That's, right? I don't feel comfortable that's betting I'm, on some games. Yeah, that's why. I, and I, I don't like the the lines this week at all. They scare me the way that like they're all real close. There are teams that I like them. We're not good. I don't like the lines this week, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to really look at this before I pick my bets. But the bets that are out right now, go, uh, go vote on my Twitter poll so you can influence uh, <laughs> which uh, which game I'm betting on. You can choose. I, you can either win me money or you can decide to just screw me over and bet a terrible team and I, lose me money. Like Casey's. I want to say That's what Casey does. No, no, no. I was about to say. I, I want to say that I actually, I actually. Um, I took it serious and betted on the one that that I would have picked. Which um, one was it? I, it was like the Texans and Jags, and it was a pick 'em game. Um, and yeah, I, I, I picked I just, the Jags. I'm just doing, yeah, so you would have you would have lost me. Money I would have. Yeah, yeah, I would have. Well, I but it was one of those things where I I genuinely <laughs> believed. I was like I was looking at the matchup and I was like, you know what, I like it. But anyways, yeah. moving on. All right, yeah, I, I have the Bills covering the three and a half point spread as of right now. 
what's the highest we'll do this so that if anybody's listening and the line does move what's the highest you would feel comfortable betting on the bills to cover mm, minus 5.5 five. five and a half okay yeah i think yeah. i think I'd, i would I'd, i think i'd go up to six and a half again just because i feel like the yeah. Bills should be able to win by a touchdown but once you once you go past that i think five I, I even four and a half once you get past that i'm definitely much more hesitant um, but I do just – I believe in the Bills enough that last week was not what the Bills are. Last week is not what the offense is. And you're going to have a nice little get-right game against the Dolphins, who are a good team, but you match up really well against them. Um, so what is your score prediction? I'll give mine, and then we'll close it out there. 34-13. Uh, to 13. Uh, I think Josh Allen I, – I don't, I don't necessarily – I'm not going to say Josh Allen can throw for four touchdowns. I think overall the offense is a lot better, and they actually put up the points that they should. This offense should be averaging 30 points a game. I think 34 is pretty decent. I've got them uh, kicking two field goals. I think they learn once they get past that, you know, halfway point on the field, midfield, right, that they should start seriously considering Bass as a weapon. I mean, I, I think they uh, take two um, field goals. And then, Tua, I think you're right. I think if you stop the – I think you're right. I said it. I think if you stop the run game um, and, and make him throw, you it, said, you said, get him off his first read. Um, I think when you start to do that, then, um, then yeah, they're, they're going to have a little bit of trouble. Um, but yeah, that's it. 34, seven, or 34, 13. Yeah, I have uh 31, 20. I think it is going to be a closer game. I, obviously that's still a double digit win. That's still a two score win. But I think that's because, like I said, I think the Bills and the Dolphins stay close in the first half. And then I think once Josh Allen kind of settles in, because I expect him to settle in this week, whereas last week he did not. Once Josh Allen settles in, it's over. The game is over once he gets comfortable. And I think he's going to be able to get comfortable this week. And I think he's going to be able to do some damage. Like I said, 350 yards, four touchdowns. No interceptions. And I'm going to throw a little bit more into that. The Bills defense gets two turnovers. I think we make up for not having a turnover last, this past week, and they get two yeah. this week. So, obviously, we are not we are not dead. The games are not done. We have 16 Crucify more. Us. There's 16 no. more games. Do We're not done. be one of those people who's like, oh, this team can't even win the Super Bowl because they lost the game. No, they could still the get things over. together. There's so much oh, time left in the season. I I did I did see somebody say that the the season was a wash today. I saw that oh, today on Twitter. I did nice. see that. Yeah. So yeah, that's, there's it. an overreaction. That's a good. Yeah. yeah that's so. a, that's a good overreaction. Yeah. You know what we we saw far too much of. Oh, the season's over. I don't believe in this Bills team. No, look, I'm still here. Casey's still here. Get off in this Bills team. Last week was not an indication of what this Bills team is, Casey. Let me get a Go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills.